Today we will explore how to make this UI go from good to great. The design already looks decent and functional enough, but what we are going to do today is to explore how do we take it to the next level. This is the UI of Digi Yatra app. If you are an air traveler, you must have come across this app. Basically, Digi Yatra is a decentralized mobile-based ID storage platform where air travelers can save their IDs and travel documents. And then using only their face as the identity throughout the journey in the airport. No body passes, no fingerprints, just your face. And today we are designing its homepage. In general, redesigning isn't about completely changing your UI to the point that users no longer remember your brand. For me, redesigning means retaining what works and elevating the things which needs a slight push. We will keep that in mind while redesigning Digiatra's UI as well. This video is going to be interesting as we will be interacting with real world UI examples. So don't forget to like this video and make sure you watch it till the end. Now with Without wasting any further time, let's get started. All right, let's get to designing. But first and foremost, let's see what Digi Yatra is. So this app starts with some of the boarding passes, which I've already added. And underneath it, it's just my identity credentials, which is nothing but, you know, one time Aadhaar verification that you need to do. There's a place for previous trips as well, which is nothing but the same things that you see when you scroll these cards. I feel it's pretty redundant. It could probably go and sit somewhere else or it could stay in some other place. And of course, a button to add a new boarding pass. As a part of this redesign, I'm not going to handle the add a new boarding pass flow. I'm going to keep it separate. I'm just going to talk about this home tab that you see at the bottom out here. There's also got a few other tabs like cab, hotel, services, which are coming soon. I don't see the point of some of these, but okay, let's leave that aside. I'm just going to talk about the home tab here out here. And this tab also has the Digiatra, the new logo on the top left and tapping on it does nothing. It's okay. And there's also a notification bell out here. I remember a while back when I was trying to tap on it, a pop-up was coming up, which was asking me to rate on the app store. I don't know what the point of that is. Anyways, and at the bottom, there are some cards. Now these cards are are not tappable. So they are neither advertisements, they are not links at all. They are essentially things which is teaching you or telling you about what Digi Yatra is. Now the fact is if I already have a boarding pass on my app, do you really need to keep teaching me about it? So I personally find this redundant. Where this would be useful is if there are no boarding passes, if I have not done my identity verification and all, it could come as a walkthrough as a tutorial at the top. But in this case, it doesn't make sense. So in my redesign, I'm going to just knock off these cards because at least from whatever I have analyzed out here, I don't really see the use of it and none of these cards are tappable. All right, so let's get... Now, if I look inside the boarding pass itself, it has got some essential elements out here. It has got the QR code, it has got my name, it has got the logo of the airline, the date, the seat, the flight, the PNR number, the sequence number, and of course, the origin and the destination of the flight. That's the contents of this card. Now, from a functional point of view, I feel this is pretty good. There's nothing massively wrong with the contents of this card. I never thought I would ever say that for a government app, but yes, it is actually not all that bad because it works perfectly fine. Some of you might be thinking, when is this used? Like it's of course used in the airport. But if you look at it or if you have used Digi Yatra, you will know that you will rarely use this app inside the airport. You'd probably add your boarding pass while you're on the way to airport or at your home or maybe at the airport. But once you've added the boarding pass, you don't really need this app because after that, your face kind of does all the work. However, you will need this app only for two reasons that I could think of. Please add more in the comments if you can think of. One is to see your basic details of boarding which is the boarding time, the gate number, the zone number and your seat number because you need to keep referring them and you may not remember, right? You do a lot of things in the airport. And the second thing is, rare case, but it can happen is when the face scanner at the airport fails. What if the face scanner hardware isn't working? In that case, you will use this QR code and scan it in a separate machine or they will use with their handheld machines and that's how you will get verified, right? Other than that, there's not really any other use of this app. So I'll keep in mind these two things. The first one is a much more bigger use case for me because as a user, I keep referring to my gate number, my zone number because they will say zone 2 boarding and I'll have to know what my zone is, my seat number and all. By the way, in the present design that Digi Yatra is like, there's no mention about zone and in these days, a lot of sequential boarding happens, at least in cities like Bangalore where they board zone by zone and if you don't know what your zone is, you're kind of stuck. It has something called sequence number which is a very internal airline thing which I don't think the passengers refer to the sequence number all that much. So yes, I'm going to refer to some of these things while designing. 
mining. So let's get started. So let's get to Figma right away. All right, so let's get to Figma. First things first, I don't quite like the logo of Digiatra. Of course, I recreated the logo here on Figma. And if I look at it, there are some questions and doubts that I have about it. For example, I see a D out here. This is probably a D. D stands for Digiatra, which makes sense. But why does it have these four colors? What do they mean? It's not quite clear out here. And secondly, why does it use a gradient like this? And why does the text kind of overlap on top of it? Maybe gradient is used to signify some sort of a moving speed because, you know, airplanes move at high speed. But I don't quite understand because this is a logo. So how will this gradient translate in a monochrome logo? Is it always going to be line logos? So all those things are not very clear. So I decided to redesign it a bit based on my need. Okay, so I extracted the colors out of it. You know, I picked the same colors out here, but you will also see that I kind of tweaked them. So these colors are slightly brighter and darker than the ones which is used in the original logo. So after that, I went ahead and tried to redesign the logo and I made a way too many exploration, just a way too many exploration. Some of them are like outright bad and some of them are okay. But after a lot of attempts, I finally narrowed down to this logo. Now, this is a very simple typographic logo. It's simple, but it also has two hidden aircrafts in it. Let me show you where. The first aircraft is here, the nose and the wings inside the negative space of D. And the second one is this Y itself. You know, if you kind of tilt your head, you will see that this Y is not nothing but an aircraft which is moving in one direction with the wings and all. Uh, again, I'm not a logo designer, but I try to do it regardless because, you know, I'm going to do a good job at redesigning the DJ Yatra and I don't want to use that logo which they have out there, which I personally don't quite like. So here I went ahead and did something with whatever little design fundamentals that I have. You'll also see that it's not simply a text. I've actually made some changes like this D is manually created and I try to match all the angles. For example, look at the angle at which this Y is going, this angle and the angle that these wings are making on the D and even on this G, you know, the original G is kind of like this. I put, you know, one cover on top of it so that the angle is similar to the angle of the D and the Y here. So that's where my Digiatra logo is. Now, the biggest problem with this logo is it's a very big departure from the original logo which they had. Of course, I stripped away many colors out of it and it's a very big departure. So if I were to sell it to them saying it's a redesign, they'd probably not accept because it's too big a change. Because of which I made a fallback logo, which is this one, right? Now, this is also a new logo, but it has some similarities to the older one. For example, the D is retained, the colors are retained. Of course, you know, I added a, a plain which is kind of seamlessly going inside this, right? So yeah, this is my fallback logo, but for the sake of this redesign, I'm going to use this logo today. Okay, I spent a way too long designing the Digiatra logo, but now look at this logo. I created this in entirely in three minutes, out of which two minutes and 30 seconds was the ideation time and not creation. And here's the best part of this. I can take this to Figma or Illustrator and further tweak it as per my preferences. It's fully customizable. I created it on the Kittle AI X1 logo generator. And once this logo is ready, I can go ahead and create other design related assets on this platform. It has everything that the designer needs from AI. Think of it like an AI tool created keeping designers in mind. And that's not all. Kittle also has a suite of products designed to fulfill every part of your design journey. You can generate images right from the platform as per prompts, transform text, and fulfill design needs at all stages of the brand. If you are starting in graphic design, it's a must to have a pro subscription to Kittle because A, you get ideation to understand good design principles. And B, if you're a new user, you'll be getting a 50% discount when you use my code for the first month. Check the link in the bio to claim it and let's get back to the redesign now. All right, so let's go ahead and start working. So I have this new page out here, which is called Workspace. This is where we are going to do the redesign today. And I have collected some assets here already. Of course, some logos of the airlines, which I plan to use it in the boarding pass, uh, the logo of Digiatra itself. I also kept the color swatches in case I need to use somewhere. I also made a small plane icon. This is just using basic shapes, you know, rectangles and quadrilaterals and all. And I also downloaded this nice map illustration. Let's see where we could use that perhaps. This is a vector illustration which has got some lines going in one direction. And that's the whole reason why I downloaded this map because I think we could do some interesting stuff with this. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So I will take one artboard. There's my artboard. And I'm going to fill it up with the dark color because I want my app to be dark. Now, if you look at this, the functionality of this app is relatively lesser as we've already spoken about it, right? So I don't have a strong reason as to why it should be a light or a dark, but I personally think it would look better 
better if I make it darker, at least the choices that I'm going to make because the boarding cards, which I primarily want to make them white and light would stand better on a darker background. So that's the reason why I'm choosing, but this is just a personal preference. So don't worry about it. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick this color. This dark blue is what I want to have as the color of the background. Right. I have one more thing out here, which is nothing but the iOS status bar, which is downloadable. You can download it from the internet. I will just put it inside the artboard and align it all the way to the top, you know, just so that it looks like a real app. So next I'm going to go and paste the logo inside and I'm going to keep it on the left hand side. And people who have seen my tutorials before, you know that I'm a sucker for grid. So I'm going to add a grid to it. So I'll select this artboard and I will click on layout grids. By default, it adds an eight pixel grid. I'm going to make it a four pixel grid. And here the, the grid color is not quite visible on this. So I'm going to change this color to a light shade of, you know, some greenish blue so that it's at least visible over this dark color that I have chosen. Now that I have the grid, I'm going to align my stuff, right? I'm going to keep roughly 16 pixel space on the left and uh, you know some amount of space at the top which i'm going to measure later i've kept 16 16 on left and the top itself you know measured from this and i'm going to play around with that spacing later for now i'll just keep the logo for the sake of it next i'm going to design the outline the boarding card itself which is nothing but a rectangle so i will draw a rectangle and same again i'm going to leave 16 and 16 pixels of padding on both the sides Okay, I'll align it somewhere with the grid like this. I will figure out the spacing later. Don't worry about it. I can always move around and I can also, you know, keep changing the height of it. You know, as and when I keep adding contents inside the boarding card, I will change the height of it. Right now, I'll just keep it some, some random height. Of course, I'll fill it up with white. I'm going to give it a rounded corner of around 20 pixels. And I'm going to click on this and do a corner smoothing up to 100%. Now, as a visual element, I'm going to add two ridges to this card. Now, if you see a real boarding pass the real boarding pass always has a terrible end which has those dotted lines so that you know you can tear it and one part the airline keeps and the other part you keep now in a digital world nothing gets torn but i would still want to bring that look because it's reminiscent of how a real boarding pass is so i'm going to create some small ridges on the left and right side of this card just one single one of them Okay. All right. So I'm going to do it using circle. Again, I should also tell you that this is not really my original idea. I'm inspired by what Apple does in their Apple wallet app. I think they've done a fabulous job. I'm just getting inspired by that. So to create those ridges, I'm going to draw first one circle, maybe around 24 by 24. Yeah, 24 is good enough. And I'm going to place it somewhere here, right? Somewhere here. And I'm going to fill it up with the same blue color so that, you know, it appears like there's a hole. So this is the ridge that I was talking about. I'll make it on the other side as well. Of course, when I'm giving the assets to my developers i will use a boolean tool and do a subtract and all of them but for now i just don't want to get into any kind of complicacy i will just keep it the way it is and i will just keep those circles on top of it so that it appears like it's a hole and i'll also make a copy of the same thing and i'll put it on the other end out here you see, this was the ridge, the terrible part that I was talking about. Now, let's come to the contents of the card itself. Of course, we've already spoken about the four very important contents which the user will keep referring again and again, which is nothing but the boarding time, the boarding gate, the zone, and the seat number. So I'm going to give it a special treatment. I'm going to make them big and perhaps enclose them in a rectangle and put it at the bottom, which we will do in a while. So let us go ahead and look at some of the relatively lesser important stuff. And a couple of data points are the from and to of the flight, the date of the flight and the logo of the airline. So these are the three things which I want to put above this ridge that I have made out here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do it. Um, I'm going to start writing text out here. But in this regard, I need to tell you that I will be using a narrow font, a condensed font. Why? Two reasons, because this is a boarding pass. So we're going to put a lot of data inside. So it's going to get dense with a lot of text inside it and a condensed font. And if I use a condensed font, I have the liberty to make the size larger so that it improves the readability. And at the same time, since they're condensed, it's not going to take up a lot of horizontal space. So that's one good thing about condensed fonts in this regard. The second thing is, if you see an airport, the boards and all, they use a condensed font there as well. Of course, they have their own reasons, perhaps the same reason, the space. So if we use it in this app as well, it'll be a nice reminiscent of how it is in the real world. So that's what I'm going to do. The condensed font that I'm going to use is called Ostrich Sans. If you don't have Ostrich Sans, don't worry about it. Go ahead and use any other condensed font that you want to. So there is my font Ostrich Sans and I'll use a size of maybe around 20. Okay. All right. So there it is. The font size is 20. I'll keep the line height as auto. And I see that line spacing is set to minus 2%. I don't know why. Maybe I had done it before. I'm going to make it plus 2%. The reason being, 
it just gets a little easier to use. The reason is it just gets a little easier to read in this context. Okay, so this is going to be the from and to city. So I'm going to call it BLR, which is nothing but Bangalore. And I'm going to make a copy of this text layout and I'm going to change this to Bombay. And I'm not going to write two in between, but I'm going to draw a small arrow. So I'll just grab the pen tool and I will quickly draw a arrow here. All right, there I have my arrow and I'm going to make it 1.5 pixels thick and I'm going to round the corners out so that it just looks a little nicer so there i have it i will also see that there are roughly equal space between them yeah i think i have roughly equal amount of space so there i have the bangalore to bombay text ready and i'm going to group them together select all of them do a command g now right on top of that i'm going to write the date of travel okay the same thing i'm going to use ostrich sands and say let's take some random date maybe 14th of feb 2024 this is the date and of course this is going to be smaller i'm going to make it 12 size ideally i don't recommend going 12 which is too small a size for a mobile interface but the fact that this is all caps we can use 12 because all caps has better readability because they're larger okay so there i will keep it right on top of it and since it's a smaller size what i'll do is i'll also increase the character spacing even more to further improve the readability of it so i had plus two in the previous one in this one i'm going to call it plus 16 percent so plus 16 percent is the character spacing that i plan to keep out here so there it is i have the date and the bangalore to bombay here i'm going to place it accordingly of course i can also keep moving these things as well all right so i'm going to move them slightly above around four pixels yeah i think this is good enough all right now we have it there now on the right side i'm going to place the logo of the airline let's pick the air india express logo for now and i'm going to paste it on the right hand side and i'll try to make sure that you know they all kind of align with each other you'll see that this logo is neither going to align with this nor with that but somewhere in the center because overall it should feel right and the best way to align is when i draw a line out here because that's exactly when you know how much of space do you have because right now there could be an illusion of a lot of space out there so i'm going to grab the pen tool once again and draw a line here from here all the way to this that is nothing but the terrible edge that we are trying to mimic of course it'll have a thickness of one pixel and uh, i'll keep it black but reduce the opacity to 10 percent so that it becomes a line which is of very light gray color you know now that i look at it i feel that i should increase this padding from 16 to 20 you know i think that's what i will do i'm going to make it 20 pixels on the left and once we make it 20, even this has to be 20 on the right, because I feel, you know, a little more padding would be needed, especially when we have those ridges and all. Otherwise, this was getting too close to this cut, which is not nice. OK, so I can also reduce the height of this so that this line also aligns with the content that we have placed out here. You see, now that we have this line, it is much easier to analyze whether this is centered or not. Yeah, it looks like it is. Maybe I can bring it down by one pixel. OK, this looks good. And now let us go ahead and make the most important part of the boarding card, which is nothing but those four important data points. Let's go ahead and do it. Right. First things first, I'm going to draw a rectangle out here. And inside this rectangle is where my content is going to sit, right? Just like at the top. Now, in this regard, although we had kept a padding of 20 on 20 on the top ones, here we'll keep a padding of 16 and 16. The reason being, it is going to have content inside. So it is already, you know, will have a lot of padding here. So since this is going to be white space anyways, I took the liberty to make it slightly bigger because optically, that's where it'll start making sense. You know, when we do, you will know what I'm saying out here. For this, I'll copy some of the existing stuff that we have here. So I'm going to pick this and this, you know, just so I'm going to pick this and this, make a copy and paste them inside this rectangle rectangle so there we have on top of this rectangle of course i'm going to change the color of this rectangle to a very light shade of uh, blue actually so i'm going to pick this blue color and go all the way towards this territory where it's almost a gray right i'm just doing eye estimation but when i'm really designing the app i'll probably do this estimation once and then save the color so that i can keep reusing so there i have it i'm going to give it a rounded corner of around 16 pixels maybe 12 pixels and then uh, do a corner smoothing of around 100%. This will be my label and this will be my content, right? So the first label is nothing but boarding time. I'm going to just call it boarding. And the boarding time, let's take it 6.30, which is nothing but 
you know 1830 yeah but i'm gonna make this one much bigger much bigger than what we have used here so this was 20 i'm gonna make it 32 you know it needs to be really prominent so that the moment you have a look at it glance at it you know what is happening yep all that i need to do is just make a copy of these and just keep putting on the left hand side with all the other information but what i'll do is i'm gonna add an auto layout to these two things right so i'm gonna select this and this and do a shift a now the moment i do it you'll see there's a lot of padding which gets added at the center out here you know i have not touched the line height they're all set to auto and i'm not gonna touch i believe so i'm gonna reduce these to negative right so maybe around minus four is what i'm looking at out here and also the label i'm going to reduce the opacity to 50 percent Okay, because this is just the label. The label is not as important as the content itself. So I want the content to stand out and not necessarily the label. So that's why I have taken this call. And the more I look at it, I feel, you know, instead of minus four, I can probably make it minus two. I think minus two is good enough. Now there's a reason why I've added an auto layout because we'll be adjusting some of the horizontal and the vertical spaces out here. And that's the whole reason. So I'll first align it. Yeah, so that it feels like it's in center. This is good enough. So now this is an auto layout. And I'm going to add certain amount of padding on the left and right side of it, which is nothing but this one. So if I add around maybe 16, this is how it becomes. Of course, 16 is actually too much. We will reduce it later. Let's keep it 16 for now. And now I'm going to make three more copies of it. So the first copy is this one. And this is going to be a gate. Let's call it maybe 53. And the one after that, I'll make another copy of it. This is going to be the zone. Let's call it zone two, maybe. And we'll make one more copy of it. Uh, this is nothing but let's call it maybe um, 4A. That could be the seat number. All right. So there we have it. Now I'm going to select all of these and add one more auto layout on top of it. Right. I'm going to select all of them and hit shift A. Now I'll try and align them at the center out here. But there are a few other things which I will insert inside this auto layout, which is nothing but some kind of vertical separator. It's going to be a very faint white line. So I'll take the pen tool out here and draw one small line, okay? I'm not even measuring what the height of it is. Maybe you know, around 32 pixels should be good enough. One pixel is good, right? And I will copy it and paste it inside this auto layout. So by default, it goes to the end. But the good thing is I can bring it wherever I want. So I'm going to select this entire auto layout and make it center like this so that this line appears on the center. And I'm going to bring it here. So I'm going to make one more copy of it inside the auto layout itself. Command D and move it to the right side here. One more copy and bring it here. So now we have the separators just like the way we wanted it. Just that I want the colors of the separator to be white. Like I said, I want them to be very, very faint. Just be there. Okay. And I will delete these as well. Now what we will do is this is where auto layout actually helps us. So we can go ahead and increase the spacing between each of these elements. We can just go and play around with this and we will have nicely spaced out elements. So I think when I give a space of four pixels, I think now all of them have adequate spacing between them, including the left and the right most things. Right. So, yeah, I think this section is ready. And this height that I had roughly taken back then has kind of worked out, which is 76 pixels. I think it just works. So I will select this auto layout and this 76 pixels height of rectangle and make it a group. So this becomes that section which everyone will always keep referring to. All right. So that's about it. Now, let's go ahead and put the other information that we have out there, of course, which is nothing but the name of the passenger. I know that this app belongs to one person, but still we cannot ignore the name. So the name probably has to come so the name the flight number and the pnr number now some of these things are not as important of course the flight number is important the pnr is important but maybe they are important when you are doing a web check-in right but once you're in the airport maybe they are not as important the flight number perhaps yes because if you want to refer to something which announcement which is being made so we are going to put them out here we are going to give them enough importance but not as importance as we had given to these sections for that i'll again make a copy of these two Command C and I'm going to just paste them outside here and we'll use the same exact same thing for the other things as well. So first one is going to be name. I'm going to write my name out here. Yep, that's my name. And here also the label, I'm going to make it 50%, right? So I'm going to group them and keep them like this, right? I need two more copies. And now once I put all of them, then I will decide what the height of this boarding pass would be based on how much of space that I have. So here is one copy and here is another copy. You see, we need to make it 
larger. We'll see. We'll have a look at it, right? And of course, these things have to be unidistance or equal distance from each other. So right now we have around 22 and 22. We'll play around with that. So it's a name. And the next one is flight number. The flight number can be, uh, you know, I5, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's just call it this. And the last one is nothing but PNR. I'm just changing the text. And this is again going to be some sort of an alpha numeric five digit number, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just keep it this way, maybe. Okay. All right. Now we will just space those things around equally. Now, when I select all of them, it shows me the spacing that we have established between them. I'm going to reduce it. I feel that much is not needed. It was 22. Let's try to make it 18. I think 18 is good enough. And based on that i'm going to position this card as well so that roughly equal amount of space on top of name and underneath pnr and based on this i will increase the height of this boarding pass overall and ensure that there is around 16 pixels of spacing left yes so they are right on the grid so this is 16 pixels padding on the bottom as well now things are pretty simple we will just go ahead and use this qr code and paste them here so there we have the qr code and uh, it's sitting out here now that i look at it i feel you know these can be smaller so instead of 20 i'm going to make them 16. I think this is good and I will just make them sit on the grid. So now we have this and we also have some amount of padding because otherwise the name would go under ellipsis. Well, the name can eventually go under ellipsis if the name is too long, but we'll have to make sure that it works for most of the cases. Definitely it should work for my name, right? All right, so there we have, we have actually designed the boarding pass out here. Next, there's just one thing which is remaining, which is nothing but the button to add one more new boarding pass to it, which is going to be a rectangle. Okay, so I'm going to make it 48 pixels tall and I'm going to use the same blue color which I have been using in the logo as well which is kind of the brand color and I'm going to give it a corner radius of around 12 pixels and I'll just smoothen it out to 100% and I'm going to bring it down. Now we can definitely use this button but when I look at it I feel the thing that should be standing out the most in the screen is the boarding pass itself and when you already have a boarding pass I think I would want to use a secondary button instead of a primary button but that's all. I don't have a very strong reason for it. When you are designing you can decide if you would want want to do a primary button or a secondary button I will do a secondary button which is nothing but the way I'm going to define is the stroke is going to be the blue color and it's not going to have a fill like this and I'm going to make the stroke as 1.5 pixels and inside it all uh, for the sake of simplicity I'll just use the same ostrich sans font already although when I'm really designing this app if I'm really designing the real app I probably use a simpler font for the button but for the sake of exercise we'll just keep it this way so it's going to be add new boarding pass i'll also add an icon a plus icon on the extreme right side of it so it's go i'm just going to draw with the pen tool itself a very rough there we go we'll fill it up with blue and uh, we're going to give it a thickness of around two pixels there we go we have it now i'll also select all of them and do a grouping now we have the boarding pass ready so i'm going to select all of them and do a command g group and now there were two things which i haven't added in this design yet which is your identity credentials essentially the verification using aadhaar that you do and the second one is your past trips now, I haven't solved for what would happen when there are multiple cards together. Maybe they'll get stacked or they'll go under a scroll. I don't know about it, but we need a space for the past passes. So I'm going to combine all the sections, which is nothing but the account section, the section which talks about your identity verification and also your past trips, because it makes a lot of sense to have the past trips inside your account section. And for that, I'm going to have a profile picture here. And there I got a profile picture of mine. You can use your own picture and I'm going to make it a group. Now, the reason I'm making it a group because I want to convert it into a frame so that I can crop it later if I want to. So I would make the frame size 48 by 48 because that's what I want my profile picture to be of the size. So this is uh, 48 by 48. Don't worry, we are going to resize the image as well. So that's 48 by 48 and we will resize the image inside it. Now we'll also add a fill color to it. Um, you can pick whatever you want. I want to pick a slightly dark uh, gray color like this. And I'm going to give it a radius of at least 24 pixels so that it becomes a circle. Now, once it has become a circle, I'm going to resize my image inside it so that, yeah, it looks nice. It just crops it well. And I'm going to keep it here 
with the padding of 16 pixels and i'll also ensure that there is enough padding on the top and bottom as well i'll keep at least 12 so which means i'll have to bring this one down remember i was saying that we'll we'll resize it or reposition it based on the contents that we put up this is exactly what i meant and now i will realign this digiatra logo with this profile picture so i'm going to bring it down a little more maybe on top of this grid and okay it's still not aligned can just use the align tool and just get done with it although it's not fully on the grid but this is a logo this is not really a text and on top of this i'll also add a green tick for this i will just draw another circle which is 16 by 16 and i'm going to place it on top of it see i'm using the keyboard because if you try to use your mouse this circle is going to go inside this frame that we had made this is a frame if you remember so i'm just using my keyboard for this right so i'll place it roughly here i'm going to fill it up with some shade of uh, you know green maybe this green is good enough I'm going to give it a stroke outside and uh, maybe around two pixels thick and the color of this would be the same blue color so that it feels like this is kind of punched into it and inside it I'm going to draw a tick again I'll grab the pen tool and quickly draw a tick which is like this right the, there it is i don't know why it picked blue so yeah white is good enough so there is my tick i'm going to select this and this and group it together i'm going to select this green and the profile picture and group them together so there i have it i have the profile section which talks about my identity and also my past trips i have the boarding pass with the essential things at the bottom and a button to add a new boarding pass as well and of course a new logo now this is nice the redesign is done and I can, you know, sell it to a client or to the government and earn some money if I want to. But I feel we could do something more out here. You see, this is functional. This does the job. This is clean. This is nice. But let us look at some of the challenges that we were talking about. Now that I look at it, I feel, you know, I can maybe use this uh, arrow and make it the orange colors because, you know, it's essentially the arrow, the airline, which is kind of bridging them. But anyways, I think we have a good redesign in place, which is a vast improvement from what we initially had. But I feel there's a little more that we can do out here. Let's think about some of the challenges or some of the reasons why people would want to use this app in the first place. First was, of course, to look at these things. And the second was to use the QR code. Now, if the scanner breaks down at the airport is one of the conditions that I'm going to cling on for the next slight modification that I plan to do with it, which is nothing but it is rare if a scanner would break. So do we really need to show the QR code upfront? right of course we will still show it but should it be at a size where it is scannable if you look at this this qr code is big enough so that it can be directly scanned although in the real digiatra app if you tap on the qr code it further expands and it becomes like really big of course it's much easier to scan that way but even if you do not what i have tried in the existing app you could directly scan this one as well so here's where i'm going to make a condition what if we make the qr code smaller with the extra space that we unlock can we do something interesting that's what i'm going to attempt to bring a little more appeal and visual touch or some amount of magic to the design let's go ahead and do it so i'm going to just make a copy of this artboard and keep it aside some of these things i'm not going to touch you know the logo this account section and this uh, button i'm going to not not touch at all and even inside this card there are some things which i will not touch at all for example let's just go ahead and ungroup because i'm going to work on it right i'm not going to touch this part because that is very important and just for the time being i'm going to keep these things outside and also the qr code out outside will come back to that and uh, I will also remove this line and also the logo outside right all that I'm going to do is bring some appeal to the header the top part and make maybe the Bangalore to Bombay part a little more prominent now what value does it add nothing much but it does bring some appeal and I see some potential in which we can bring some appeal to it so if we can bring appeal without compromising much on the functionality or compromising at all at the functionality why should we not do it that's exactly what i'm going to do out here all right so i'm going to take this ungroup this section as well get away with this arrow because i wouldn't use the arrow anymore and make these things really big they were 20 pixel size i'm going to make them 56 you see what i'm trying to say out here i'm going really big on it right so uh yeah we'll keep it somewhere here we'll figure out the paddings later and this date would still remain exactly the way it is it will be at the top like this and this bombay i'm going to bring it right underneath like this okay and for the two i'm going to use that aeroplane icon that i had used if you remember so i'm going to bring that aeroplane icon here 
and we'll figure the color out just in a bit. And now for this background, I'm going to bring some color to it. And this color is nothing but it's going to be the brand color of the airline itself. Why? Because it's going to create some nice differentiation from one airline to another. So I will draw one rectangle here and I'll take it behind. And of course, just like the card at the bottom, I'm going to round the top two corners with 20 pixels and use a corner smoothing of 100%, right? We will figure out the size of this card later. But wherever this card ends, I will move these ridges to that position. If you see, we are just changing the top part. Initially, it was small. Now we're going to make it big and bring some visual elements to it. Now that we have it and this one, I'm going to give it this orange color. And now that I look at it, I feel I can change the color of the destination from black to white so that, you know, this is black, this is white. And this one, this aeroplane, I'm going to make it white, but I'll also reduce the opacity to around 50% because, you know, it's not really the most important thing out there. It just shows that from and to. See, this is not just the from and to destination, but it also adding some amount of visual interest to it. And now on top of it, you remember the world map? I'm going to use this world map on top of this, the background. And I will resize it to an extent so that, you know, it kind of fits into it. And this is a vector map that I found. So I'm going to change the color of this to white and the opacity of this to around 30%. OK, so there it is. It'll sit right here nicely out there. And I don't want to move this map so much. So I'll just go ahead and lock this layer. Now we could do a few more things. Now we'll also have to accommodate this logo. Now what I'm going to do is I'm not just going to simply put the logo out there. I'm going to bring in a tail of an airplane, if you know how it is. And most of the airlines have some sort of a logo or visual element at the tail of the airplane. I'm going to bring it exactly here. And this is exactly where the angle lines on the map come into the picture. So I'm going to grab the pen tool and try to draw a line which is of the same angle, roughly of the same angle. You know, use any of these lines as a reference and then roughly draw one line which is of the same angle and finish it off as if it's the tail of an airplane. So there I have an outline. And of course, I'm going to fill it up uh, with, with some color. Let's fill it up with white. And uh, I will, uh, you know, I can scale it accordingly. Now we can go and edit it further so that the angle is perfectly matching with the lines of the map. I think there I have it. And now I'm going to just select this corner and round it a bit. I will select these corners and just round it slightly lesser, maybe around two pixels. And I'll also make the corner smoothening to 100%. Now, one more thing, I'll add one more character inside is there's nothing but another line similar to this. And uh, this one is going to be slightly different. It's going to fade out like this. I will complete that quadrilateral to make another quadrilateral inside this. This is nothing but it's going to be some kind of color inside it, right? And this will be maybe a lighter shade of, uh, you know, orange. We'll figure that out later. I see a bit of white streak out here. So I'll just hold it and bring it all the way to the end here. Okay, so there I have it. And this one also, I will round it so that it just feels like a natural curve. And now we'll place the logo here. I'm going to bring this logo rotated, reduce it in size, and I'm going to bring it out here. Now, this is going to work for every airline because, you know, any logo will have a wordmark version like this, which can nicely fit into it. And now that we have all of them, let's go ahead and put the other content as well, which is nothing but the name, the flight number and the PNR. But I'm going to make two small changes out here. The first one is I'm going to knock off the label of name. So I'm not going to use the label of name at all. And I'm going to bring this name out here and put it right because, hey, it's my name. So it's okay. I don't need a label. It's fine. And I'm going to bring these stuff up out here, which is nothing but flight number and all. But instead of using them as a top bottom layout, I'm going to use them as side by side layout. Now here, I will also change the fonts a bit right? The name, I'm going to make it around uh, maybe 18. Yeah, let's make it 18, slightly bigger than what it was before. And this numbers, I will reduce it to 14. So there I have it. The first one is flight number and the second one is PNR. We will adjust the spacings. I'll select both of them, make copy, and this is going to be PNR and the PNR, whatever we had, I will just copy it here. I think I'll just get away with the number part because, you know, it is the flight that we are talking about and I will just close them out. See, there are lots of liberties that I'm taking out here. OK, now I will just adjust the spacings, move the name a little up. And I think this looks kind of fine. You know, we could also make it slightly bigger if you want to so that, you know, it is kind of holding your vision. And now we have just left with one thing, which is nothing but the QR code. So I'm 
I'm going to take the QR code and place them where? Place it here, but not at this size, but a reduced size. You see, everything is present here. It's just that the QR code is slightly smaller in size to the extent that you may not be in a position to scan it directly. You know, some scanners may find it difficult to scan it right away. But the moment you tap on it, we'll make another screen which expands it and then we are all good to go. And I'll also move this, you know, airline tail in a way so that this part kind of hides behind it. And this color, I will make it a light gradient. So I'm just going to grab the gradient tool and bring them here. Of course, I don't want opacity as zero. This side, I'm going to make it, uh, give it a yellowish tint, something like this, so that it creates some kind of interest here, which just feels like, you know, this is the glowing side and then it just goes slightly darker. And once I've done it, this one, I will switch it back to whatever the actual color was. But anyways, I think here we have it and I feel you know we can maybe increase the height by another eight pixels so that these things have a little more breathing space you know and uh, there we have it so I will just remove these things from the side we'll quickly make one more variant which is nothing but the expanded form of the QR code now like I said this cannot be scanned directly but when you tap on it it should open up in a big way so that even if someone is struggling they can still scan it comfortably so that's what I will do out here I will remove all these details we don't need it in the expanded state of QR code I will remove all these things again you know all the bells and whistles that we had made out here and we will bring this thing back whatever we had in the smaller one so that in the expanded state it is still pretty small and we will reduce the size of them okay i realize that the map is still here we don't need the map inside this so here we have it we are going to make it same size as this one so 14 february 2024 it'll be blr it'll be in one line so this goes away and this would be as the same style as this so we're going to keep them here the same arrow will come at the center and this bombay will be here and we'll group all of these things together and do a center align and rest of the space will just be occupied by the qr code so it is one big qr code which they can scan once they tap and expand on the qr code from the previous screen so there we have it so this is a two-step thing where you have the qr code of course here because you wouldn't use it all the time but whenever you need to you just tap on it and expands and then you can scan it and we could take this call because it would be a rare occurrence that you scan the qr code but this design still has two flaws i'll tell you what the flaws are but i need you to tell me what the answers or solutions to that are in the comment section so the flaws are this qr code when you tap on it it expands but how would the users know that they can tap on it to expand or essentially how could you create an affordance and tell the user that this part is tappable that's one flaw. The second flaw is once you have tapped and expanded it, how can the user go back to the previous screen because nothing which is suggesting it. One obvious way we could be, you could say, hey, you tap on the QR code once again, it'll minimize, right? Okay, but that's not as clear as we would want it to be. So these are the two problems which are there in this design already. I need you to tell me the solutions in the comment section. So to sum up, the problem statements are, how do you create affordances for the QR code to both expand and collapse it back? Let me know in the comments. So there we go. We redesigned the DigiAthra app. One, a very functional one, which just works perfectly, but a nicely cleaned up version, a professionally designed version. And the second one is also a functional one with one small condition, which is the QR code, but it's a much more visual and maybe a little more aesthetic version of it. So that's our redesign of the DigiAthra app. So that was all from my side. What do you think of the redesign? Should DigiAthra implement our UI suggestion or is it better off without them? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And please like and share this video with your network and hit that subscribe button. It motivates me to create more content for you. If you're interested in my design journey, you can have a look at this video where I talked about how I got a high paying UX design job. And if you're looking for free resources to boost your design skills in 2024, don't forget to check out this video of mine. Until next time, this is Sapta. See you all in the next one.